Hey guys, Lewis here with Fedivo. Today, we're going to look at what I consider the best AI plugin on the market for After Effects. It's called Concept Buddy, and it's developed by BSKL, who also produced Diffuse AE, another AI After Effects plugin that we have previously covered here on the channel. Concept Buddy is a new design workflow that helps you achieve your vision by interacting with AI. For example, in this composition, I've prompted Concept Buddy to give me a meadow with mountains, but let's bring this scene to life with direct user influence with shapes and colors. I like this meadow, but I need to see more hills. So using a custom shape layer in the same color of the grass, I'll bring this into the composition so Concept Buddy adjusts the generation. Okay, I like this, but I want there to be some separation. So I think mist forming in a gorge will do that quite well. A misty blue shape layer helps us achieve that. But now this image is a little too cold, too sinister. So by bringing in a small yellow circle, Concept Buddy will generate a yellow flower. This is a lot more relaxed, but to make it grand, I'm gonna take my pen tool and create a red triangle in the background to prompt the generation of a mountain being illuminated by the rising sun. This is the final generation, and that is insane. Let's run you through the basics on how you can do this. All right, guys, I'm in After Effects. Now, given that this is an After Effects tutorial, one would hope so. Uh, this is a super simple plugin to use, but we do need to do a little bit of housekeeping at the start to ensure an efficient workflow and make sure that the composition structure is correct. So let's create a new comp. Uh, I'm gonna call this one Edit. I'm at 1080 by 1080, just a small square. Uh, if you want, this could be your standard size, could be 4K, could be 8K. But do note that Concept Buddy is GPU heavy, so uh, if this is a higher resolution, it's gonna require a better GPU, and also it's gonna take longer to generate the images. And then next, I'm going to create another comp, call this render, and make sure all the settings are exactly the same. Now, what I want, is for edit and render to appear both on screen, kind of like a, an NLE timeline where you've got the media panel and the timeline viewer on the right side. So to do that, we just go up to view and select new viewer. However, I do find this is where people can get caught up a little bit because if I go up and click it now, I can't. I'm over here, I can't. You have to make sure that you have this um, viewer panel selected. So let's go view, new viewer. And now on the right hand side, we want the final product. Uh, so it says composition edit, that is incorrect. So we need to click this padlock to unlock this viewing panel, go to render, and it's now switched to render. I'm gonna lock this. And the same on the left hand side, we want this to be edit. So go to edit and then lock that one off. Finally, we're gonna go to the render composition in the timeline and bring in the edit comp. So that is for the edit composition to be brought in to the render composition timeline. And it's from here that we can now build the foundation of our image. And I think the word foundation is a very important word because unlike mid journey or chat GPT, where you're generating images from text and it's very dependent on the prompt and what you get in can be completely different from the next day. And this information is taken from artists and all of this sort of stuff. With Concept Buddy, it's very dependent on the concept that you as the user are inputting. So let's have a look at this. Um, I want to build, what can we use? I've got a cactus next to me. Let's use that as uh, a little bit of inspiration. A cactus in the desert at midnight with stars in the sky. So we do this through solids and layers and shape layers. Let's try and get a sandy color. That's quite sandy. Call this sand. It's probably a little bit too bright actually, but that's okay because I can use that as a further example for something a little later on. Let's get our night sky. Uh, call this sky. And then I want a cactus. I'm not too sure if it's a cactus or cacti. I always get mixed up on what is the, the plural. Let's go down there. And then I'm gonna take my mask tool. I have a nice thin cactus. And with the sky, bring that up. So <laughs> what we've got here 
is the core foundation of an image. And if you take any image and you take away all of the detail and the texture and you just leave the shapes and the color, you're always going to end up with something that looks like this. So we've got the desert sand, the horizon, the sky and a cactus. It's Concept Buddy's job to take this information along with a prompt and generate an image. So we go to effects, let's go to the render composition and add Concept Buddy to edit. And here we're going to go to edit prompt and I'm going to say cactus in desert sand, midnight sky with stars, photo wheel. And voila, instantly looks fantastic. And if you notice, if you pay attention to where the cactus is positioned, as well as the sand and the uh, midnight sky where they connect on the horizon, it all follows the foundation which is laid in the edit composition. And what if you want to change where the cactus is? Do we need to create a new prompt? Do we need to start generating? Nope. We just select our cactus, move it to a different location. What if I want the sky to actually be a little bit further up and there to be more sand? Well, we just move the sky up. Or if we want less sky, we move that down. And Concept Buddy is generating all of this information depending on what we're doing within this composition here. Now, I did say that colors play a very important role in this. And I'm not too sure that this sound is the brightness that I would want it to be. So let's go here, solid settings, go to color, bring this down. Run about there. There we go, much better. That sound certainly looks a lot more representative of the time of the night. And I think that sky too is actually a little bit too saturated. So let's go to solid settings and lower the brightness of that. There we go. That looks like it's been taken with a camera with a high ISO. And what you will notice if I just undo this, look at the stars in the background and look at the information on the sand. The only thing that's changing is the peak of that mountain over there. And it's very minimal, actually. All of these other peaks in the background stay the same. And the cactus is remaining pretty much untouched. And that's something that I don't often see on image generation AI tools. Usually you adjust one thing and near enough the entire image has changed. Or you go back to it a day later and it's changed because the model has been updated. So can we add stuff to this. Well, yeah, let's uh, duplicate the cactus layer and bring another one. Now we've got two cactuses. Or we can add in an entirely new uh, bit of information. Uh, let's go to the shape tool. Sis white, yes. Let's add the moon to the night sky. Now we've got the moon added in. But look at this. I'm going to decrease the scale of the moon and look at what happens. Instead, it's now reading it as a big nebula, a little bit of a, a galaxy interpretation in the sky. Why is that? Well, if we go to render and have a look at edit, cactus in desert sand, midnight sky with stars, photo reel. We've not included the prompt that there's a moon. So Concept Buddy is generating that correctly. It is looking at it as if it should be a large cluster of stars in the sky rather than the moon. So all we do is put with moon and stars save. So now we've got the moon in the sky and this is looking very nice. But there's another thing that I've noticed. Uh, in this particular image, I find that the moon light on the cactus is producing a shadow which is not correct in terms of its directionality. The shadow should be more around here. So to fix this, we just need to direct Concept Buddy in the right direction with again using shapes, layers and colors. So I'm going to duplicate the cactus layer, change the solid settings to black, change the rotation ever so slightly, and bring it down here. And now what we've got is a cactus that's producing a shadow in the correct direction of that moonlight. And the fact that this is all done with user input, again, with just the core foundations of the color shapes and layers is fantastic. And for me, it really makes it one of the more intuitive plugins on the market, not only for After Effects, but AI image generation in general. 
So let's have a look at the concept buddy plugin itself. We know we've got the uh, edit and tools section here for the prompts. The model, we've got standard and Excel. Excel is just gonna be pulling from a larger database. You can install this when you're downloading Concept Buddy, uh, but again, you are gonna need a little bit of a more powerful PC to use. And then we've got quality, where we can have a look at polished. It's gonna give it sort of a, a more realer rendition. And then we've got seed, which is just gonna base this uh, prompt and information from the edit composition on a different generation, so we can change what we were getting if you don't necessarily like what you're seeing. And the amount of seeds there are uh, pretty much numerous. Uh, let's just increase the moon here. There we go, nice. Uh, and then we have advanced. And this is where there's gonna be a lot more control uh, over the environments within the scene, as well as how realistic the scene looks itself. So here we have strength, and this is pulling from the guidance of the edit layer. So if we didn't want it to have so much control of the AI generation, we can pull it back. And we can see here that it, you know it's a lot more reflective to uh, not only the layers, but the shapes in the edit sequence. But a lot of the time, you're gonna want this ramped up to 100. Which, you know, that in itself is uh, it's just outstanding. So a lingering question you guys might have, do we have to use shape layers? And the answer to that is no, absolutely not. So here I have uh, an image from Freepik. It's of uh, a village which looks like it's just been ransacked by some demons. It actually looks a little bit like uh, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, if I pronounce that twice. If I pronounce that correct, probably not. Uh, and what I want to do here, I've got my scene, but I'm trying to pitch an idea of this sort of location that we need to create. So I've brought in this gate again from Freepik and I want this area to be quite foggy. So this in itself would usually require uh, some matte painting work to blend these two images together. But what we can do is use Concept Buddy to help visualize our concept. So now if I go to render and here in my prompt, I've got oil painting fog. I'm gonna turn this on and we have that. So it's using the basis of what we've got here already, set up in the scene, but with this asset that we've brought in, it's created an entirely new image based on our vision. So what if we were to take this one step further? Well, let me just turn off Concept Buddy. And here I've got a warrior. And in fact, this warrior is not very fit into the time. This is just another image downloaded from Freepik, but She's got a gun there, kind of looks like she's from uh, from space, some, something in Mass Effect more so than uh, fantasy. So now if I go to the prompt and type in fog and put warrior on the right, and we're given this image, kind of has a nice Elden Ring feel to it. And again, it's all based off where this, this character has been input. We still have the gates in the background, but it's being merged together from what we've set out in the work composition, quite like what we saw with the cactus thing. We can take it a step further. I'm just gonna turn this off one more time. I do find that you need to turn this off when you're adding new elements in because it seems quite prone to crashing at the moment. It was only recently released. But here I've got one more um, asset. This is a, a brightly colored demon creature, it looks like. Uh, maybe something from Hades. I'm gonna to go to render. And I'm going to say mutated demon creature on the left. Save. Let's turn this back on and wait for this new render. And that in itself just looks so cool. It looks like uh, this warrior is in a fair bit of trouble. So it's taken some pr um, privilege for, for sure. I think I've probably used quite a tricky asset here <laughs> in order to generate this monster. So in using these assets that we've downloaded from Freepik, we have really brought this scene to life to give it a vision uh, behind the concept that we're looking for, which I guess is why the plugin is aptly named Concept Buddy. All right, guys, my name is Lewis with Fedivo. 
And I'm going to continue messing around with uh, this composition that I introduced in the beginning because it is very picturesque. <laughs> uh, but let us know what you think about Concept Buddy, if it's something that you're going to add to your toolkit or if you think its use is a little bit redundant in After Effects because, well, I guess there's no real motion graphics properties inside of the creation itself. But do remember that we have a number of tutorials on how to animate AI generated imagery. So be sure to check that out. Uh, if you, this plugin has picked your interests. Until then, I'm Lewis.